Rebecca Krahava Jehova from Teshuva Ministries and this morning we're going to talk about kosher for a few minutes. So we're just going to lay a few things to rest here and get back to what the scriptures actually says about what foods we are supposed to be eating and what foods are not actually foods at all. <laughs> of uh, the years I've gotten uh, people wondering what this kosher thing is all about when you uh, leave and you cross over and you become Hebrew and you realize that you're part of Ephraim and you're turning back to obey Papa what does it mean to be kosher what does that mean <laughs> quick there are two uh, two ways to look at kosher one is there's rabbinical kosher and there is biblical kosher so rabbinical kosher uh, is something they do in Judaism or brother Judah does it um, it is basically supervised uh, food preparation foods that conform to the regulations of something called kashrut I think that's how you say it is kashrut, uh, which actually means fit for consumption. So uh, there's um, a ton of laws about it. It is extremely complicated. Basically, it's a rabbi or a um, kosher certification company that is uh, making the policies uh, for what is deemed kosher or not. And so they are actually deciding what uh, is kosher and what is not. In fact, they actually have. Um, insects, certain insects that have, they have deemed unco uh, unkosher, which the scriptures base, makes it very clear. Most, sick, <laughs> most in, insects are not fit for food, um, but the uh, agencies and stuff that uh, certify as kosher will actually go in and they will um, search the vegetables for these insects um, kind of thing. So it's, just, it's very heavy. They have special kitchens, so they separate, uh, you know, meat preparation from dairy. And we all know that a lot of that is a really good idea to do. You, you don't want to be uh, cross-contaminating, uh, things like that. They also slaughter their animals in a certain way so that the animal doesn't feel any pain. Uh, so it dies real quickly, like instantly. We all know that the research is coming out that, uh, or has been out for a long time, that you don't want to eat an animal that has felt a lot of stress because a lot of hormones are, you know, shoot, shoot through their body at the moment that they're killed or, or as they come up to that moment. You don't want to eat that. So uh, definitely one, some really good things there with the, some of the laws that they have going into uh, what do we eat. But let's look at biblically kosher. Okay, so biblically kosher is very simple, uh, and all you have to do is look at what did Papa say? What did Yahweh say in the scriptures? So let's look in Leviticus 11. Uh, this is where the uh, the food laws are. We see them. Um, it says, Yehovah said to Moses and Aaron, say to the Israelites of all the animals that live on land, these are the ones you may eat. And then he goes on to, to uh, list out what is clean and what is not clean. It's real simple as far as the scriptures go. So we know that biblically kosher, uh, the idea of clean and unclean uh, is uh, a Melchizedek issue. because we find it prior to the covenant that was made at Mount Sinai or Sinai with uh, the Hebrews. Uh, so let's look in Genesis. Genesis, um, Noah knows about the clean and unclean. Uh, Yehovah says to Mo Noah, uh, go into the ark, you and your whole family, because I have found you righteous in this generation. Take with you seven of every kind of clean animal, a male and its mate, and two of every kind of unclean animal. So at that point we know that there's already been made a, a distinction between clean and unclean. So we know that this is a Melchizedek issue, therefore it remains and 
yes, you must do this. <laughs> you must take consideration as to what food you actually eat. So what you eat is very uh, important to Papa. Uh, not just what you intake, um, you know, physically, but what you eat through your eyes and, and through your senses, right? So during Unleavened Bread, we talk about eating of Yeshua, what that looks like. Um, so he's very serious about eating like because we become what we eat right so since we're on the a topic of kosher like what to eat food laws and that sort of thing in Acts 15 and 1 Corinthians 8 and stuff um, it talks a lot about do not eat uh, any kind of food that has been offered to an idol uh, so if you know that a certain food has been made for a certain feast that is a uh, not a feast of papas but a pagan feast that would be uh, the idea of do not eat something that's been offered to an idol so you know what christmas candy looks like you know what easter candy looks like you know what all those things look like so just don't eat those things if they've been already offered uh, to that feast and that festival you're not to touch it this is the idea of being set apart this is the idea of being you know what's clean and unclean okay there are uh, animals in the scriptures uh, that Papa makes very clear are not food they're not to be eaten so they're just not food he would give you he gives us everything to eat that is food but certain things are not food and so he's telling he tells us what things are food and what things are not food so just quickly biblically kosher all right and I'm gonna put up all the scriptures you can look at here and and read um, so the dietary laws that are outlined in the Torah say there is the forbidding of eating of the unclean, which is Leviticus 11.47. Uh, you cannot eat animal fat. Go figure. Leviticus 3.17. Uh, you cannot eat animal uh, meat with blood still in it. Yes, so people that like things rare, think again. You cannot eat that. Uh, Leviticus 17, 12 to 14 talks about that. My hands are so cold. <sighs> you cannot eat an animal that dies itself. You don't know how it, how it died. Deuteronomy 14, 21. You cannot uh, eat roadkill. <laughs> All right. So if you see an animal died on the side of the road, you cannot stop and pick it up and take it home for dinner. Okay. <laughs> Who want to? I don't know. Exodus 22, 31. You cannot eat a abdominable things abdom and abdominable I don't know how to say that but you cannot eat animals that have been strangled Acts 15 20 to 9 also two other things that are considered uh, in the dietary laws of the scriptures is drunkenness and you cannot you can drink but with control you cannot be a drunken okay Leviticus 10 uh, 9 and Romans um, and also you cannot uh, basically have no control over how much you intake so you can't overeat and there's no gluttony allowed <laughs> all right so those are also those are part of the dietary laws so no drunkenness no gluttony or overeating um and uh be careful what meats you eat and um how you eat them We'll just go over real quick the clean animal meats. So the clean meats on the clean list would be cows, sheep, goats, deer. There's more and so I'm going to put a link here to a, a website that has a, a full list or you can just google it for heaven's sakes. Just google it. Just go to Mr. Google and uh, ask, ask Google <laughs> and it will show you. But uh, just for the sake of this video real quickly, um, the uh, clean uh, birds are uh, chickens, turkeys, geese, ducks, doves, pheasants, quails, grouse. So those things you can eat. The things that are the ocean that you can eat are salmon. Love salmon. Oh, wild, fresh caught Alaskan salmon. Really good. A trout. Um, basically anything with fins or scales. All right. So now the, the unclean, you ready? <laughs> For those of you, uh, uh, who eat this stuff that I'm going to read off now and you have to um, change what you're doing. This is part of repenting and change how you're eating. Oh, <laughs> I'll pray for you. 
Okay, here we go. Uh, the unclean um, bear. Okay, and, and interesting, uh, he also gives in here, uh, he says, whatever goes on its paws, uh, as well as the command to uh, whatever does not have a divided hoof uh, or chews its cud. So anything that has a divided hoof or chews its cud, a land animal, then you can eat that. Um, and you can see the list, he makes a list in the Torah for us. Um, but anything that doesn't do that, doesn't have a divided hoof, doesn't chew its cud, or something that goes on its paws, you can't eat. So on its paws would be things like cats and dogs, bear, that sort of thing. Um, the divided hoof and stuff, let's look at this, pigs. We all know now, I mean, there's so much evidence out there that, that uh, pigs, pork, is not food. And you should not be putting it in your body at all. Have you seen what dogs and cats eat? And have you seen what pigs eat? Do you know where your food comes from? Probably not. Anyway, I just took the dogs for a walk. And I'm sorry, but Buddy stopped on the side of the road to eat some poop. <laughs> You know, our cat mices constantly you should see, if you haven't seen a cat eat a mouse, it's disgusting. And they leave like a certain part of it because they don't like that part. I don't know what it is, a gizzard. I, not a gizzard, that's chickens. Anyway, point being is, have you seen what dogs and cats eat? Have you seen what pigs eat? If you have, you wouldn't want to eat those animals because they're obviously garbage cans. <laughs> to me, that's a duh. <laughs> disposal you know how in your kitchen your kitchen sink you have a disposal <laughs> or it chews up all the stuff you don't want and stuff or a garbage can where you throw everything that you don't want there are certain things that that um, Papa has made certain animals that Papa has made that clean up the planet so is they're taking in all the toxins they're taking all, all the yuck the bottom feed, feeders on the on the ocean uh, the vultures the things that clean up uh, roadkill, <laughs> you know, and a pig is one of those that does that and you don't want to be eating your garbage Period is <laughs> Why is it so difficult to understand? I don't know <laughs> But you don't want to eat your garbage and your garbage can right and so we have animals Papa has put animals on this planet to be our garbage cans Let's not eat those um, if you eat them, you'll get sick. You'll get disease. You don't want the diseases of the pagan So he's outlining what it is uh, we need to stay away from and what we can eat in order to not have the diseases. The unclean, back to the unclean. So we've got bear, uh, pigs, pork, um, horses. And uh, just on the horses fact, did you know that jello and marshmallows have horse in it? The gelatin. So you have to be really careful, ladies, when you go to the store and buy something with gelatin in it. I don't think we have had jello for like. 10 years. <laughs> well, ever since we became Hebrew, we haven't had jello or marshmallows. And I know that the kosher marshmallows are very expensive, but if you have to have marshmallows, go get the kosher, kosher marshmallows. Now, if you find kosher jello, please let me know because I don't know where that is. <laughs> so, uh, on the unclean list still of the land animals is camels, rats, uh, snakes, uh, cats, dogs. There's a whole list there. Um, as far as unclean of the birds, uh, crows, vultures, eagles, bats, <laughs> uh, all kinds of things there. Um, and as far as unclean goes from the sea, now this I know is going to affect a lot of people, uh, catfish, shrimp, eel, scallops, shellfish, that would probably uh, include things like mussels and oysters and ugh. <laughs> anyway, squid, octopus, all these funky things um, that we have um, reality TV shows or, or, or in the Food Network you have these, these um, hosts of these shows going to eat really crazy stupid things. Um, they shouldn't be doing that, but but again, uh, they're pagan, so they can do whatever they want, I guess. <laughs> but as far as Papa's concerned, when you become set apart, when you become Hebrew, you'll be careful with what you put in your mouth and what you put into your body. Did you know that animals were not made for food? All right, people, I know you ranchers think that cows were made for us to eat, but in all reality, that is not the 
picture that the Torah paints. Uh, yeah, I know some ranchers and, and they tell me that's what they were created for. Well, no, they weren't actually. In Genesis 1, 29 to 30, uh, we see what animals uh, were created for. And they were not created to eat. Of course, there were concessions made at the flood. That is when the concession was made uh, to eat animals was at the time of the flood. And I just want you to see here, um, Genesis 1, 29, it says, uh, then Yahweh said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. Huh, that makes me think if it's GMO and it's not bearing seed, you shouldn't eat it, people. That's why looking at whether your food, whether your vegetables are, and your wheat and stuff, if it's GMO free, that's good because then it's going to be seed bearing. But if it's a GMO plant, there are many crops that Monsanto has created where they do not produce seed anymore. And it says right here, no ED. No, no. <laughs> So he says, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and to all the birds of the air and to all the creatures that move on the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. vegetables just alongside of the humans right so this whole talk of well the canines and the you know and the tigers mouth and stuff were made to rip apart flesh now, in the original they were not to eat uh, animals themselves either so animals were not created for food they were created for our pleasure and it even says later on at the time of Noah that it was at that point that the animals became scared of humans he put the fear of humans in animals at that time <laughs> Up until that time, uh, animals were not afraid of humans and they weren't eating each other and they weren't eating people and people weren't eating them. <laughs> okay, so yes, there was a concession made at the time of the flood, but people, you don't need to eat animals. We love fish, uh, you should eat fish. You don't need to get your protein through meat. You can get your protein through legumes and vegetables. There's high, high amounts of protein in things like kale and, and beans and things like that. You do not have to have meat. Uh, okay, and you know if you really think about it if you look at your animals and go you know The idea of slaughtering that animal to eat um, It it really turns my stomach to think about and and I eat meat every once in a while And if I do eat it, it's organic for sure and I really am careful about where I get it and hopefully It would be nice if I knew uh, what ranch or what farm it's coming from and how they slaughtered it and stuff, but you don't need meat. I've lived nearly half a century and um, I'm fine. So there you go. A very quick expose on what is kosher. Uh, so we got the rabbinical kosher, the biblical kosher, and remember, uh, you don't need to go over the top with this and find the little K with a circle around it on all your food products. Do look at the labels. There are um, there is food that has been dedicated to Allah. You have to be careful, uh, especially some of the big veggie bags in Costco. Really look at those labels and uh, find out what it is, where it's coming from, and who it's dedicated to for sure. So you don't have to have a rabbi tell you what you can eat. Uh, Papa has already told us what to eat. It is a Melchizedek issue, so definitely be careful what you eat. This, um, These rules are not uh, set against us. These are rules that are uh, to give us life. Uh, he knows how he made us. He knows what our bodies can handle, what um, what we're supposed to be intaking so that we can be um, operating at our best and be um, alive, uh, vibrant, and healthy priests for him and uh, image bearers of uh, our creator. I don't know about you, but I am most concerned with what uh, the creator uh, is asking of me, what the creator... Uh, deemed appropriate to eat and what is not appropriate to eat. And on a side note, I just want to um, encourage you to uh, look at uh, the food that you're eating uh, as to if it's GMO free and organic. 
uh, I'm a big advocate of GMO free and organic food and, and primarily because um, when I was at Boise State University I did a, one of my senior projects there was uh, looking at big ag and looking at Monsanto and uh, the effect that GMO crops have had on uh, humans and their DNA and uh, their you know their health and it is hands down unbelievable uh, what is going on with uh, the food supply and how Monsanto and other big egg companies have um, basically poisoned our food supply with things that are not food. So really look at um, the chemicals that are, are put into food, the way that they change the actual structure of the wheat, of the food. Um, this is causing the gluten intolerance. This is causing a ton of diseases because they are um, creating things that are not food, that shouldn't be in our bodies. So you know the saying that goes, by beholding you become changed, uh, you become what you eat. Uh, if you eat GMO crops, uh, that is genetically modified organisms. If you eat genetically modified organisms, then you become a genetically modified organism. And the last thing you need to be is less than human. You need to, because uh, that's what it's all about, is trying to uh, change the DNA of the uh, human being so that um, we're, we're not human anymore. So. Uh, so when you intake um, GMOs, uh, genetically modified organisms, they're going to go into your body and genetically modify you and uh, create something that is not supposed to be there. So be really careful. With I'm not here this morning to really go into depth about GMO and organic for, for sure. Um, that would take another video in itself. But uh, definitely be careful if you um, care about what goes into your body. Look at what the Torah says to do. Look at what Papa has said to do. And then look at what's going on around you. And um, all the research that is, has gone on about GMOs and organic um, and make a wise decision. And that wise decision, I think, definitely would be in favor of doing as much organic as you possibly can. Organic means it's already GMO free, okay? So if we see the GMO project, it means that it's um, the, the seeds and stuff are not genetically modified. So that's good. So if you have to, just go with that. Uh, but if it has the organic uh, stamp on it, then you're more sure that it is non-GMO and it's not used, they're not using chemicals when they grow it and that sort of thing. And there's issues with organic. They have to pay a whole lot of money to, to be or deemed organic and whatnot. So sometimes you can go up to a farmer's market and a farm will, they can't be certified organic because it costs too much but they actually you can ask them and they just they'll tell you they don't spray a lot of times you'll see something at farmers markets and stuff that say no spray so that that's that's pretty that's really good just ask them if they're using gmo uh, you know seeds because <laughs> a lot of the seed companies are are gmo be careful of the dirty dozen you know go go google the dirty dozen and get your dirty dozen in organic and and that will be that will be a good start <laughs> So there's just one more thing we need to deal with, and that is the vision that Peter had. So uh, most people uh, take that vision that he had with about the clean and unclean animals that came down in the net or whatnot. They take that as permission to uh, eat unclean foods, but that that was something that Papa was saying was now he was making something that was unclean clean. But that dietary issues, um, the idea of, of biblically kosher had nothing to do with that vision. What was really happening there was that Yehovah Papa was teaching uh, Peter something about his prejudice. He had prejudices against the Gentiles and, and with good reason. He'd grown up in a society where if a Jew, a uh, slightly orthodox Jew, would have been found in a Gentile's home, then somehow that would defile the Jew and they would therefore be considered unclean and so he didn't want to do that. Well, you know, it's a very cool story, but you have to read it from beginning to end to understand what the, that vision in context. And Peter himself, actually later, uh, makes it very clear what that vision was about. He's explaining uh, that Papa had basically already shown him that it was okay for him to go in, okay for them to, as disciples of Yeshua, to go into a Gentile's home and uh, teach them about Yehovah and bring them into a covenant and, and mikvah them in the Rock HaKodesh. So, um, 
it's a really cool story. Basically, uh, you know, Cornelius is a Gentile who's on the sea uh, uh, in Caesarea, and he loves God, and he gives alms to the poor and everything. And um, he gets a vision, and he the vision that he gets from Papa is call for this guy Peter or whatnot. And so then, so so you have a prepares uh, Cornelius's heart. Um, for um, repentance and for the rock Hakodesh to come, but then he prepares Peter's heart uh, to be the deliverer of that. To uh, so Peter's goes into vision. He has the vision of the clean and unclean coming down in that net. He has that three times, and when he wakes up, instantly there are three people that have just come that Cornelius has just sent over to get um, Peter because in the vision that Cornelius got, he knows where to go. So. He sends these people over to get him. There's three people. The vision happened three times for Peter. And it, and Peter was tested in the sense of uh, Yehovah was teaching him through the dietary laws that are already that are in the Torah. Peter knows that Yehovah doesn't change. He knows he's not going to be making uh, the unclean clean again. That, that, that's ridiculous. He already stated what was clean and unclean. So Peter knew that that, that vision wasn't about food. Was about actually instead. Uh, cleansing the heart of the unclean uh, to be clean again. So that's what Papa was saying to Peter, and Peter got it. He understood it quickly because as soon as those three people arrived, he knew that he was called to go. He knew it was all right to go. He knew that Papa wanted him to go uh, to Cornelius and uh, bring the Rakakodesh there so that Papa could, uh, you know, clean the unclean. And uh, that is a cool story. It's a really cool story, but you have to read the whole thing to understand it in context. So you can't take that vision out of context and say, now I have permission to eat unclean food. No, unclean food has been unclean food the whole time. You know, a pig has been a trash can since the creation of the pig. It hasn't changed. He didn't deem it clean now. The job of the pig hasn't changed. The way the system um, of the pig has not changed. So. Uh, no, Yehovah does not change. We ha what we have to do is divide the word of truth, but but also we have to just read the story. You have to just read the whole story, and and it's interesting because Peter actually later on, uh, you'll see in there when you read it, uh, he actually explains it because he had people coming to him afterwards, challenging him on it, like, why did you do that? You're not supposed to go into a Gentile's home. You're going to be unclean. And Peter was able to say, no, Papa has taught me and that this is what we're supposed to do. <laughs> and that the salvation is for the Jew and the Gentile. Salvation is for everyone. Everyone is called to repent. Everyone is called to come back into covenant. So um, the idea of kosher, I just thought I'd attach this onto the video of kosher because it is a, uh, it is all about what we eat, right? So uh, this, this little video about what we intake in our, <laughs> You know, what we're eating, what we put on us as ladies of Teshuva, what do we put on the table uh, to feed our families? Uh, so we want to be careful what we put on the table and just follow the biblically kosher dietary laws that are found in the scriptures. They're very simple. You don't have to follow the rabbinic stuff because that's that's for rabbinicism and, and we're not into that, right? We want to know what Papa said. <laughs> so we want to be Melchizedek priests that um, are uh, helping to um, make smooth level paths for everyone coming out of the nations, the scattered Israel, so they know how to obey, right? Papa is all about cleansing the heart of the un unclean. So, you know, we as, you know, <laughs> we long time ago um, were able to get cleansed up, cleansed by Papa, and now our hearts are clean and we are obeying. So, way cool. Hope that explains, hope that helps. <laughs> all right, guys, be careful what you eat. Do eat what Papa tells you you can eat and you'll be cool.